This is the Lowrider 2 CNC machine. Um, you build it from a kit, and as far as I know, it's one of the cheapest options uh, to build a CNC machine that can handle a full 4x8 feet uh, sheet of material. This cost me about $750 initially. Um, I do have a 3D printer, so I was able to print my own parts, and I did have another small hobby CNC machine that I was able to cut out the MDF parts. Um, also, I had a table to support the MDF uh, cutting surface. The aluminum T-track and hold down clamps and stuff were uh, additional costs that I added later. At the time of building this, I only came across one other large format CNC kit in this price range, and that was uh, the Maslow CNC. Um, but based on everything I read about it, it seemed like maybe it wasn't quite as accurate uh, in the corners and just didn't seem like it was going to be a good fit for me, so I chose this one. So let me just share some projects I use this machine for and uh, my experience of using it along the way and hopefully this info will be useful to you if you're considering building this kit. Uh, the first project I'll show you is some badminton racket stands uh, for my wife's badminton club. Um, I designed the files in Fusion 360 and there's a plugin so you can export your G-code for the lowrider. Um, you can see that uh, the vacuum does not really work that great. I think maybe it needs some brushes or the design needs to be altered because I never had good luck with it. It just made a huge mess. Uh, I used the lowrider to cut out the pieces and then I used my small Carf King CNC uh, with a, a diode laser on it to uh, engrave the court numbers on the stands at the same time. Uh, so yeah, my garage was very busy that day. You can see that the machine is cutting fairly slowly. Um, you have to uh, really um, use some conservative uh, speeds Otherwise, the machine just can't handle it. So this is the second project I used the Lowrider for um, to make this custom arcade cabinet. Um, I designed it all in Fusion 360 and then exported all of my G-code uh, for the Lowrider to cut out all the different panels. Here you can see what the MDF pieces look like uh, before adding any uh, paint and graphics. Here you can see the lowrider cutting out the large side panels of the cabinet. Uh, during this project I discovered uh, I was having some issues. Um, basically the 3D printed pieces that support the wheels uh, were allowing the wheels to bow in slightly and over this long straight edge I discovered that it was actually not straight at all uh, it was kind of doing like a long wobble and I had to do lots of manual cleanup to uh, to actually get these pieces to fit right while I was building the cabinet um, a little bit later I'll show you some of the modifications I had to make to overcome this and actually make it cut straight during that uh, long cut Here's the third project. Uh, I made these benches for my wife's badminton club. Um, I actually just used the machine uh, to laser engrave the logos. Uh, I used traditional woodworking tools to build the benches. But uh, yeah, I took off the uh, router and added a diode laser attachment. Um, it was really slow, but uh, it, it actually worked. Uh, I think it was maybe three or four hours um, per bench to burn this logo into it. Uh, but the, the re results were great. While I had the laser attached, I used it to burn lines into my table so I could start addressing the inaccuracy issues I was having while building the arc arcade cabinet. So once I discovered that it was the wheels leaning inward that was causing the wobble down the y-axis, uh, here's how, how I went about fixing it. Um, I put this piece of aluminum uh, between the bolts of the wheels to keep the axle straight. And then I actually ended up uh, 3D modeling some new wheels 
um, that would roll down this aluminum C channel that I attached to the side of my table. Um, I don't know if, if both of those steps were necessary, but it did fix my problem after this. Uh, it was driving perfectly straight down the whole table. Um, you'll see also that at this point I had added some aluminum uh, channels for clamps, hold down clamps. Uh, unfortunately, uh, after doing all that work, I realized that actually the base plate of the of the machine is so large and low that it really interferes with using any large clamps. Uh, almost every time I use it, I think I just had to screw my workpiece directly into the table. Otherwise, uh, the clamps would just interfere. So the last project I used the Lowrider for was uh, taking our boring door and trying to turn it into a cool mid-century modern door. So I did this basically by uh, taking off our door and filling in all the, the cracks in the panels with wood filler and then uh, using a surfacing bit to uh, make everything level uh, before I started the design. You can see uh, uh, what a mess this makes. As I said before, the, the vacuum port on this just doesn't really do hardly anything. I think if you added some brushes uh, to the side of it to really contain the suction, it might work better. But as it is, it just uh, does nothing. After the surface scene was finished, I used a random orbital sander to go ahead and make it all smooth before I started my design. I used a V-bit to carve the design in the front of the door. Uh, my first take, uh, the Z-axis lost some steps and it plunged right into the door and uh, made a big gash that I ended up having to fill and recut. Uh, in the end it turned out okay, but it was uh, pretty much a disaster <laughs> at the get-go. Uh, here you can see the, the finished panel once it's made all the cuts. Here's the finished painted door and uh, the door uh, with the hardware installed in the house. Uh, what an upgrade. So overall, um, I mean, it's pretty incredible that you can uh, get a machine in this price range uh, with these capabilities, albeit it is pr probably the absolute minimum that you need to do this. Um, every project I did, I had problems. Um, I had some, some failed cuts and some wasted materials uh, though in the end I was able to get through everything. Um, so let me recap. Um, basically the dust shoe is pretty useless as it is. Um, the large base plate interferes with clamps so you're going to be screwing down your material into your work table in most cases. Um, you might have some issues with the large cuts unless you want to do some modifications to the wheel so that they can drive straight. Uh, overall the machine's pretty finicky to use. Um, ha having to re-square the gantry uh, at power down or power up and, and, and every time you turn off the machine uh, the Z motors just aren't powerful enough to hold up the gantry so everything drops so you need to make some stands uh, to keep your bit from plunging into your table. Um, yeah, and you, you got to run the machine pretty slow, otherwise the motors just can't handle the torque and they're going to miss some steps and it's going to mess up your cut, cuts. Um, but yeah, so I, I used the machine to do my projects and then promptly decided I was I needed to upgrade because, of, because it was so finicky to use. Uh, I ended up uh, keeping the nice table I built and um, using parts mostly from open builds. Uh, to just make a, a custom machine. But anyways, hopefully you found some of this useful. Um, all right, thanks.